Hello there, I'm Tabletop Toby. And today we have an unboxing. It's not gonna be a mystery for you, but it is a mystery for me. I got this in the mail and I have no idea what it is. Well, I have some ideas. There's some things that I'm expecting eventually, but I didn't receive any emails telling me that something was coming. So I am finding out right now what this is and I'm pretty jazzed about it. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm just gonna dive in because I don't really have anything else to say since I have <laughs> no idea what it is. But we'll see, we'll see if it's one of my suspects. But you all will know because it's gonna be labeled for you. So I'm jealous of you. You already have information I don't have. Oh. I'm excited about this one. I had no idea. Actually, my guesses were not this, it's Tesseract. This is a cooperative uh, dice game um, where you're working to uh, deal with the alien invaders of some sort. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's get into this then. That's really cool. I thought it was maybe something else. Let's get the uh, plastic off without hurting myself, which Paxson would be very upset by. I thought it was maybe Witchcraft, which is a solo card game, a smaller solo card game. But I had got a message saying it was coming soonish, but with no specific date. But I had not received any messaging that this was on its way, so that is very exciting. We have the rule book. And let's see, get out of the way for now. Have some punch outs. It looks like maybe the stage that the dice goes on. The containment columns, which I think you place the dice and you have certain symbols and you unlock something, or I don't know, as you go along, we're gonna find that out, I guess. I think these are variable player boards that they have different starting mechanics or when you get to the bottom of the columns of dice, um, then they have a different effect at the bottom. Here's a couple more of those. So add some variability to the game. We'll take a closer look at all these. Oh, I see. These actually were punch outs for this one and it looks like they fell out in shipping. So I was a little confused about the empty slots, but now it's making more sense. Um, I think this is just a sleeve to help you put the dice on the, um, the little platform that you can turn. If you don't drop it like I just did, then maybe the dice would go on nicely. <laughs> Uh, we have all the dice. We'll take a closer look at these. You have four different colors. There we go. Uh, we have some cards. And these look like kind of player aids or maybe these are your individual player boards that you do some shenanigans on. Here's the turning platform so you can, everyone on each side can turn the dice and get a better look at what they might want to do. And we have some additional cards. It looks like researchers. So these are maybe the player cards that you start out with. I know there's different classes you can kind of play. And it looks like that's about it. There's a pretty big insert in here. So we will open some of this up and take a closer look. All right, and we're gonna start with the dice because of course this is a dice game. So it seems like the best place to start. There's these four vibrant colors. Um, the numbers are traditional one to six, but they have these fun artistic shapes that represent the alien technology. So we have the one, 
the two, the three, let's find, that's five, don't pretend you didn't see the five, four, five, and then six. And so each of these is the same except for the different colors. And the colors play a factor in your, um, the alien tesseract that has appeared and the, the, the dice forms the cubes, you're trying to contain the dice. And so the colors play a factor because you have to have a set like three ones, or you have to have a run, which would be like one, two, three, three, four, five. Um, and they either have to be all of one color or all different colors in order for you to contain one of the dice. Just take a look at each of these closer. I really like the orange color, blue. And I like how they're just very different colors, which is very nice. There's going to be no confusion, always complete clarity on that, which in some games is an issue. <laughs> in Deep Dive, I just um, was talking in my review about how two colors were fairly close and it caused a little bit of confusion on people. So that's actually something that's super important, but these are crystal clear different colors. So that's great. They're very vibrant. The printing on them seems really nice. So we will move on from there. All right. So this is the platform board. This is where you put the shocker platform that you put the dice on. And then it also contains the primed area, which is very important. This is kind of uh, in the pandemic kind of lingo. It's how the threat spreads and becomes more dangerous. And so when you um, are in the threat phase, you have to remove and uh, roll dice, and then you put them there. And when there's three of one kind, then that can cause a breach and have ill effect on the world. So that's kind of how that works. There's some fascinating twist to that and that you can actually add more yourself to these to kind of contain the threat to just one zone. Um, and so that'll be fascinating to play with as we learn more about the game. So these are the two cardboard punch outs that make up the platform. All of the cardboard on this was super easy to punch out. It practically punched itself. And as we saw in the introduction, there was in fact uh, two that were pre-punched because they just were so excited to be free and be in the gaming world. So. So I thought it would be fun, given that this is a big physical aspect of the game, the Tesseract that's looming over Earth. It's now shrunk down to the size it is here. To show you the Lazy Susan kind of goes on top of the platform there. And that kind of goes, actually goes on top of it. And then you have these four different double-sided base plates. So they're numbered one through eight. Um, they do suggest that you start out with one, that it's the most straightforward. Um, and so that adds some variety to the game. So you put the platform base plate there. And then what you do is you take this sleeve that they've provided and you put it on top. Let's see how I can uh, do this on the fly. And then basically you mix up all of the dice. So we'll just do that in real time here because that's how we are on tabletop so we're living on the edge no recuts and redos here and then you basically kind of roll them into the sleeve and then you just make sure that each level is situated before you move on and you keep going until the whole thing is full. Voila, you line it up with the square on the bottom. And you remove these and ta-da, you have your 
Tesseract. You can now spin so everyone can look at it in the best angle. And then this is the containment board where when you have the sets and runs that I mentioned earlier, you can contain one of the cubes um, and put it on the relevant symbol and color, only one of each though, so that's something to note. And there are these containment cards that go, that you do randomly round and then these give you rewards as bonuses. So this one, for example, return two prime cubes to the test rack. So as I mentioned, the prime cubes are kind of the danger, uh, the spread of the evil test racks trying to destroy the earth. Um, so putting them back onto the test rack is good. This is each researcher takes a destroy cube, re-rolls it and places it in their lab so that's uh kind of when they're in your lab that's how you do the sets and runs so those can be advantageous they also allow you to roll to get um, research cards which we'll take a look at in a little bit um, breach shield take a prime cube and place it on this card the next time a prime cube of the value would cause a breach destroy it in this cube and ignore the breach so the prevention of um, some danger zone time so those are bonuses you get as you contain the cubes. Okay, and then I mentioned that you can uh, roll some of the cubes in your lab to get research cards. And so these are bonuses as well. And that happens when you uh, contain a cube. You can roll your remaining ones, which could affect if you're trying to build a set because you're putting those into random now. So that's kind of the cost of it. If you roll two, you get the level two research, three, three, and four four and as you can imagine the strength of these goes up with each so we'll just take a quick look at these so some of the minor ones um, adjust one cube in your lab so that means you get to turn it one number up or down um, minor fluctuation adjust one prime cubed so that could be maybe if there's two of one number you can move that to another one so that way it reduces the danger of the breach is happening. Set one prime cube to any value. So once again, the dice manipulation is a key aspect of this game. Relocate up to two cubes on the Tesseract. So that's kind of nice. You could maybe move them so that they prevent the events from happening, which we haven't talked about yet, but we'll get to those. Invert one prime cube and one cube in your lab. So just different tools to help you along. Let's see what the three ones look like. Just one prime cube and one cube in your lab. So that's a major ripple, major fluctuation, just two prime cubes. So some of those play off of the two level ones and you can do a little bit more. Rapid containment, when you contain a cube, you may contain a second cube from that set or run as well. That seems huge because you get to do, get a two for two for one. Breakthrough, gain two study actions or choose another researcher to draw a level four research card, which are the, the fancy ones, I imagine. So just some fun tools there for you to play with. And then let's see what the level four ones look like. Urgent lockdown, contain one cube from your lab. So you just get to automatically contain it without even having to um, have the set or run. And this could be really handy if there's one that you haven't been unable to get. Um, so there's temporal anomaly, skip the threat phase or decrease the breach token by one. So kind of like um, in Pandemic or other games like that, there's a phase where um, you have the threat increase. And so let's see here, spatial rift, destroy a number of prime cubes with a total value of six or less. So that's great um, to get rid of those so they don't cause a breach. Take two destroy cubes, roll them, and place them into labs of your choice. Um, so there's you can destroy cubes and take them out of the game. So this would be kind of bringing them back in. Uh, return one prime cube to the test rack. So taking it from where it might cause a breach to maybe helping prevent one of the events. Um, Reroll any two destroyed cubes and place them on the test rack. So these are pretty powerful. So with the starting bases, there's symbols on the bottom. And when 
all cubes in a column get down here, then these cause events. So there's a little guide showing you what these events are. So accelerate, destroy the lowest cube on the test rack. So that's going to make one of these other events happen more quickly in one of the other columns. Fortify, re-roll the lowest prime cube. So that could be dangerous because all of a sudden you maybe thought you knew the danger in a one of the primed rows and then it changes. Chain reaction, prime the lowest cube on the test rack. So that uh, is not good, more danger with the primed dice. Uh, fission, prime the lowest cube on the test rack and one random destroy cube. So that's pulling a destroy cube back into the game, but uh, against you this time. EMP wave, choose a lab to safeguard. Reroll all cubes in each of the other labs. EMP blast, <laughs> reroll all cubes in every lab. Interphase, prime cubes with even values adjust up by one. So that could really mess up uh, things, change things up. Uh, shock wave, destroy all cubes in labs that match the value of the newly primed cube. <laughs> so taking tools away from you to be able to build those sets to contain. So those kind of suck. So I'm guessing you want to try to avoid those. And then at the top here, we have the breach tracker. As I mentioned on the primed area of the um, platform base, um, when there's three or more, then there's a breach and there's a breach tracker. And that when you get to the top, you lose. So we'll take a look at the breach tracker, which is this. So kind of pandemic style, going up, going up, going up, and losing. So these are action trackers. These are just to help you on your turn track how many actions you've taken because this is definitely a thinky game. So you're going to be like, I'll do this, do this. Wait, how many actions have I taken? So pretty straightforward tool. And you know, one that's super appreciated because especially in more thinky games, you kind of lose track of those. All right, and then this is the player lab mat. It's kind of nice. It has a built-in player aid that walks you through the different actions that you can take each turn. It has the threat phase, um, AC remove a cube from the Tesseract and then roll it and place it into the primed area. So that happens um, every turn. And then here's the lab where you kind of build your sets and your runs. And it even explains over here what that is. So very nice built-in player aid with where you're actually doing the action of your lab there. And then last but not least, we have the 11 researchers. Um, you're supposed to theoretically randomize these each game. It does say if you really want to, you can choose your specific team. So if you want to do a setup you haven't had before, um, but these all have on them one special action that you can take. And this one says once per turn, for example, detonate, destroy prime cube that matches an identical cube in your lab. So that's pretty powerful. Demolitions expert, that makes sense. Kind of loving the art, it's very stylized. Um, but then every character also has an ongoing thing. So preparation, whenever you adjust a cube in your lab, you may adjust a prime cube. So in the 11 different researchers all have these. So this one action, Field researcher, play a research card from your hand, use its effect twice. So you get extra bonuses in the research. So maybe this character would want to roll those dice to get those research cards more because they get to use a lot of them. And then their ongoing ability is analysis. Whenever you take a cube from the test rack that matches the color of a cube in your lab, you may adjust it. So let's all go on. Let's see here. Just pick out a couple of other ones. Astronomer. <laughs> I like this. He's looking at the stars like a good astronomer. Um, so this is action theorized. The player of your choice draws a level two research card. If the level two deck is empty, draw a level three instead. So that's a very handy kind of support class ability, which is nice. And then relevant thesis is the ongoing ability. At the start of the game, draw one research card of each level. So it starts out with research, all about the research. So that's kind of nice. Gives a completely different play style than the other two we looked at. And then let's look at Exogeologist, just because I love this art and I'm like, what does that mean? Um, so here, 
the action specific to this character's extraction. Return a cube from your lab to the Tesseract to take two cubes from the Tesseract. So that provides a lot of manipulation to kind of take care of situations. And then enrichment is the ongoing ability. When you contain and reroll cubes of the same value, draw a research card of the next higher rank. So the ability to jump kind of uh, up in the research and get some of those more powerful cards. And we'll just, we're not gonna look at all their abilities, but I'll just hold them up for the art, crisis controller, linguist interpreting the alien language of the dice, magnetic physicist, logistics manager, quantum mechanic, computer programmer. It sounds very uh, <laughs> mundane compared to the other ones, but you know, very important, very important. We need, we need the program. Field researcher, transport engineer. All right, and that was my unboxing of Tesseract, which I didn't know I was unboxing. And I feel like that's, you know, thematic with Tesseract because there's the mystery of the alien Tesseract that comes. So it was a mystery when we were opening the box, what we were getting into. And, and now we have a, a dilemma and a conundrum we've got to figure out so we can save the world. So we better get cracking. So I better get to uh, figuring out how to play this game. Um, so if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. That really helps us out. And uh, if you don't, then the alien tesseract may get you. Yeah, that's it. It's just going to get you. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being here. And just remember, the only rule is there are no rules. Except in board games. <laughs>